Hello, everybody. I forgot to move my um, mic down. Whoops. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the stream. And be gone, bot, indeed. I have no time or patience for this kind of deal. Also, wow, my camera's a little shiny today. Oh, oh, those were a lot of different changes all of a sudden. And there's an update. Okay, so I guess this is what happens when you... Anyway, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing with their week? Hope that everyone's week's going relatively smoothly. I know for those of us in the academic fields, this is the end of the semester. Oh no! Oh no! I still think it's adorable, though. I don't actually know when my university's semester ends. I know my work for my degree is over. That's done. I am finished. And man, does it feel good. If you're in the Discord, you saw my final project for my final class. Um, it's the only thing that I have to show. But... Oh, so you actually had a snow day. That must have been nice. Can tell we didn't have one not really i'm very frustrated and i hope it's not going to become a regular thing but we got an email from the provost oh you work still okay that's kind of what it was for us we got an email from the provost letting us know that campus was closed but everything would be hosted online anyway we got an email from the university librarian telling us that the library was closed only essential staff and i'm not essential anymore not right now but then follow up being like, but you still have to, uh, you still have to go to do work just from home. Like, it's not the deal I made. Uh, I can understand why. I honestly can understand why. I'm glad that I took some time to go out and at least go for a walk in it. Because I love winter. I love snow. So... Now, I won't say that the walk was pleasant because it was a, my roommate and I went down to uh, down the street to walk uh, to Starbucks. Starbucks is in a strip mall on a very, very, very busy four lane road. Um, and uh, yeah, the sidewalk wasn't plowed, so we had to walk on the road. <laughs> um, yeah, it was not. It, it was a little terrifying. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was a little terrifying. Um, yeah, that was that was fun. Going there wasn't too bad. Coming back was a little worse because by then the sun had started to set. But got my Starbucks, got my walk in. Absolutely could have driven, but I wanted to walk. Please do share. Please, please do share. That would be wonderful. Um. I feel like I'm still really dark. That's too light. Okay. Hmm. That looks washed out. Unless, no, don't do anything. Stop. Stop fiddling with it, Patrick. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. God. Anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Coming after Tangle Tower is tough. Um, I've kind of become obsessed with that game. <laughs> it's really good. I really like it. The music is amazing. I keep listening to it. I've started listening to Tangle Tower's soundtrack as I'm going to bed instead of Enya, which is a pretty big development. Um, and for a little while, I thought that it was giving me nightmares, but it turns out that that was just stress. <laughs> because uh, the night that I finished my final project for my grad school uh, class, my the last one that I had, I um, I fell asleep really easily. <laughs> um, like it was kind of shocking how easily I fell asleep and how easily I stayed asleep. Um, because yeah, it was it was not 
Oh, you know why I'm so dark? Because the lighting is low. That's right. I turned it down for a Zoom call. That's why it was. But yeah, I've been obsessed with the Tangle Tower soundtrack, and I've been going back to it trying to listen to see if you can hear the twist ahead of time. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it doesn't sound like that was the case. Um, that's brighter. I look a little bit more like death, though. Let's see if I can make myself look a little less pale, although I don't know that's going to matter. Hello, Ervotsek. Long time no chat. How are you? Um, but yeah, no, I just, I've fallen in love with the soundtrack. I've fallen in love with Death Does Become Her. Look at the skin tone. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not even Caucasian anymore. I'm just straight up white. Like, this is just mayonnaise on my face. Ugh. It's funny, too, because I can still see, like, some tan lines from when I was wearing tank tops over the summer, and I went to the beach a couple of times when I did a week out at the Cape. Um, like, there's still tan lines. And I'm like, how do I have tan lines? I have been inside for months. How do I have tan lines? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not too far into 2077 at this point. I have been playing it. I have thoughts on it. It's a fine game, I guess. I don't know. It's not doing too much for me. Which way? Oh, oh. There we go. Slightly better. Um... Yeah, no, I'm uh 2077. I'm I'm of the opinion at this point that it's a firm it's fine. You know, it's not the greatest game ever made as it was built to be. Um then again, you know, an 8-year hype machine will do that. Uh, and I certainly think that a lot of the profound disappointment that some people are feeling is due to buying into it. <sighs> eight years ago and then pre-ordering it as soon as possible and then kind of needing to justify that purchase um justify that that level of intensity and so you know um i think that it definitely suffers from some serious cultural sensitivity issues you know trans things aside there are more and more things there are maori tattoos uh that they just threw in there for no particular reason um which is very appropriative you know to say the least uh so it's there are a lot of issues oh and you know don't even get me started on how practically every non-white character is a racial stereotype um like all the japanese characters are just stereotypes of japanese people and the 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 latinx characters are not that much better <laughs> um but otherwise mechanically you know everyone's making fun of the game for the mechanics and like the bugs that it has and i haven't run into many of those issues i have run into a couple but nothing more than i would expect from a game of this sort i mean these are bugs that i remember having to deal with in witcher 3 and that was a very polished game once i got around to actually playing it um you know these are just issues with procedurally generated worlds in general when there's any procedural generation whatsoever uh, in this case it's npcs for me npcs have a habit of popping right in front of my car um but then again i am parking on the sidewalk so um i have not met keanu reeves yet i have not gotten that far in the story i have not gotten to the heist kind of slowly taking my time I've actually put a bit of a pause on 2077 for a little while because um, the dawning has just started on Destiny 2, and I want to make cookies by killing people. Not sure how that works. But I'm making cookies by killing aliens. Yeah, I do. I do play Destiny 2. Um, it's kind of just like a thing on the side. Um, the best way I can explain it is... Uh, I shoot things, numbers go up, and my brain releases the good chemicals. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's... I mean, yeah, no, I could do I could do things. There's definitely some things that I that 
I'd be happy to play. Oh, I'm not even close to raid levels. Don't even get me started. Um, I'm past the soft cap, at least now. I'm up to 1233 for the season. But... I've also been I also poured a ton of time into Destiny 2 because I was waiting for 2077 2077 release and then I was just kind of like this is not as good as I wanted it to be so then I'm going back to Destiny 2 um I'm kind of giving the mod community a little bit of time there is especially that one particular transphobic ad that I desperately want to get out of the game um and the first mod that replaces that I will download like just make it a blank screen, pick another ad, I don't care. They made it sound like this ad was not like a major part of the game anyway. It is everywhere. And it is incredibly disappointing, to say the least. Um, annoying, disappointing, angering, etc. I mean, that's fair, I guess. I guess. I'm trying not to judge too hard. I promise. Um, I'm really to judge <laughs> i've had my mind changed a little about twilight because of Lindsay ellis um Lindsay ellis did a video on it was something along the lines of like i'm sorry stephanie meyer and kind of laid out the case for the existence of of Twilight. Um, I think the one thing that I can still blame Stephanie Meyer for, and I will never not blame her for, is the proliferation of similar things. Um, that Twilight gave way to Fifty Shades, basically, because Fifty Shades was a Twilight fanfic, and Fifty Shades is the worst. Um, yeah, I know. I, that's why it's like, I, I can blame her and I can't blame her. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, she knew that this would happen if she did this. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, you released that into the world. And then that created this. And mm, yeah, there's definitely an original thing here. I'm also not going to, I know pretty much anyone who actually likes Twilight at this point that, um, you know, that I've talked to acknowledges that it is not a particularly good movie or series. Like, um, in the same kind of way that I recently found out the, the E network, you know, like the, the entertainment network, they actually do programming. They have their own original programming that they do. Um, and at one point, a friend of mine did sucker me into watching one of their shows called The Royals, which is like an alternate um, British royal family. But the British royal family are basically like the Kardashians. Um, and it's trash. It's absolute trash. I recognize that it's trash. And I watched it. I watched two seasons of it. Like, it is the worst of soap opera stuff with, like, the veneer of royalty and, like, this catty sitcom level stuff on top of it. And it's just bad. But I enjoyed it. So, people can enjoy bad things. Um, that's fine. Actually, one of the movies that I've been meaning to watch um, this throughout the quarantine so far i've had like this weird hankering to go back and watch um what's it called shoot sky captain in the world of tomorrow with jude law um goop labs goop labs um gwyneth paltrow and angelina jolie i remember it being bad and yet i love it i'm gonna go back and watch it anyway we're gonna watch it <laughs> so um it's bizarre, but it's a little interesting because I believe it was the first movie to ever be filmed completely on a blue screen. Like, there are no sets. It's all CGI. Or, yeah, I guess CGI is the right word for it. It's a blue screen. The actor, none of the actors are actually on a set. Um, so... Oh, Wolfwalk. Oh, yes, the um the one that was done by the same studio that did um Secret of Kells. Um 
the Book of Kells. Sorry, they also did um, they did another movie, didn't they? Um, similarly dealing with Irish folklore, Celtic folklore, Song of the Sea. That's it. That's it. Yep, I loved those movies. Those were beautiful. Um, Book of Kells was a bit weird for me, um, because it just felt like it was very abstract. But um, Song of the Sea was so incredibly charming, and I loved watching it. Um, it's like the Irish version of Studio Ghibli. Um, it's it's wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, anywho, so yeah, um, I I have been obsessed with Tangle Tower, and I can certainly say that Tangle Tower and Return of the Oberdin both have renewed my love of video games in a way that I haven't felt in quite a while, um, reminding me the cool things that people can do with video games which was rather great um not to mention the music in both oberdin and dean din din i heard them say din in the game so i think that's right uh return of the oberdin and uh tangle tower the music just tangle tower is better not gonna lie but i'm also a little biased um because i yeah, Tangle Tower was recorded by an actual orchestra, and you can tell. There was a lot of work put into it. Uh, the light motifs in it are great, too. Like, it's very there are very clear through lines throughout the entire soundtrack that cements it all as one one piece. And, that's just, and, and I need to get off this. I need to get off it. Anyway, the big thing being, I had trouble picking a game <laughs> to follow that. Because I loved it so much that I did not know what could possibly follow it. Um, to the point where I was even thinking about not streaming this week just so that I could hopefully get down off of my Tangle Tower kick. And so what I decided to do was, yes, bring out the cats. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this one I'm excited about be for some good reasons and not excited about for some good reasons. Um, I'm excited because it's a noir. Uh, it's an adventure noir. I love noir stories. Absolutely love them. I cannot actually tell you uh, the number of times that I have thought about buying, because I already own this on like two different consoles, but not PC, thought about buying LA Noir so that I can play LA Noir on stream. That being said, nothing about playing LA Noir again is going to surprise me. Um, thing about Black Sad, and Air Votes, like you just hit on the point, I've never read the comics. I don't really read a lot of comics. Um, the only, excuse me, the only game-related comic that I've ever actually sat down and read was Fables, because I played Wolf Among Us, fell in love with the idea of the world, and wanted to read more stories done in it. Um, so, I. Oh yeah, no, the comics absolutely came first. I'm not I'm not debating that in any way. I just I've never read them. Um and so I'm kind of going into Black Sad a bit blind and Yeah, I I don't The thing about Black Sad is the art style. I get that it's iconic and that's they they're recreating the comic look for the game. But like The face is weird to me. <laughs> like, it's a weird-looking face. It's not quite cat, but it's not human. It's not cat's weird. So, it's... it's Okay. Maybe... Okay, maybe it is less weird in, in context. It's definitely one of those things where I'm like, Is this actually... Did they get, like, a... Like, um... My my roommates and I were talking about it a little early earlier today. It's very clear from watching Zootopia that there was a furry, at least one, employed by the Disney Corporation who was handling this and the animation on this. Like it's very clear. <laughs> um, Black Sad is a little bit of that weird middle ground of like, okay, somebody had this idea to use like anthropomorphic animals, but they weren't a furry. <laughs> it was like they they didn't really look at the art styles or they had their own particular art style that they used. Um, 
I mean, that's one thing that I can tell about what they did with the design. They have very clear human features that are created to be expressive, um, which I'm assuming in some of the same way of L.A. Noir will come into play in terms of any twists that we will have to deal with, because I'm certain we'll have twists. Better have twists. It's, you know, baseline of all noir is that you have a massive amounts of corruption, corruption, and incredible twists all along the way. Press X for doubt. <laughs> God, that's. I mean, maybe that's one of the reasons that I can actually justify playing L.A. Noir, even though I've already played it and I already know the entire plot. But <laughs> we can just make fun of um, what's his face? Oh God. I can't remember his name now, but like he's just pressed the entire time. He's just incredibly stressed out, and <laughs> like truth sounds like mm, okay. I'm really sorry for your loss, man, but thank you for telling me. Cole, right? Cole Phelps? Is it Phelps? I think it's Phelps. I can look this up. I, I'm sitting in front of a supercomputer. Um. Um, Cole Phelps. Yep, Detective Cole Phelps. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you can just make fun of Cole Phelps the whole time because, <laughs> like, his three reactions are supposed to be. Oh, I actually do have a little bit of background on that one. The original three different reactions were actually supposed to be press A for you assume they're telling you the truth. You press X to call their bl like you're trying to bluff them into telling the truth you think they're lying but you don't have any evidence and then why you press y because you know they're lying and you can prove it um so you press a and you're all like conciliatory and understanding and you're like i'm sorry for your loss how can we help you press y for lie and you're very calmly like you're lying and i know you're lying i have this thing that tells me that you're lying but then you have press X for doubt because they changed the text from press X, you know, to bluff them to try calling their bluff or press X for doubt. <laughs> so he just like screams at this widow whose husband has just been murdered <laughs> and she's got slightly shifty eyes and you just like, tell me where he is. I know he's alive. Oh, I and I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm the fuck down. This is literally like the definition of the 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 um the what's the word I'm looking for? The conversation selection, the dialogue selection, and not matching the tone in any way, shape, or form. Um, which is definitely more of an RPG thing. But anyway, and yeah, the higher. The Irish American captain who's just like young Phelps and he starts quoting the Bible or you know, philosophers at you as you're walking out the door. It's actually honestly just the Bible, I think. And uh, I was definitely I remember playing that just being like, this guy's weird, but I kind of like him. <laughs> um, am I recording? I think I'm recording. I hope I'm recording. Um, <laughs> right. Cheating on my wife and now I'm going to make you pay. Uh, but yeah, okay. And Herr Wozzeck, that's very good. It's very good to know. I really do enjoy it when, um, I really do enjoy it when neo noirs take the femme fatale and turn it a little on its head. Um, I think maybe what stands up at this point as one of my favorite explanation, uh, my favorite early explorations of that is who framed roger rabbit where they have a femme fatale who on every single turn you're like she's guilty she's guilty look at it. she's got a gun and she's aiming it at eddie's face and then it's like oh no she was actually trying to aim around him because he was about to get shot from the back um she's not bad she's just drawn that way because let's be honest let's be honest femme fatales are the best part of noir mysteries because they look perfect every time every time they walk out on screen i'm like oh honey i love your outfit you need to wear this 
all the time? And the answer is they do. And then the ingenue comes on screen and they're wearing like a dowdy gathered dress. And you're like, okay. And <laughs> anyway, femme fatales, always here for it. Noir genre taking on racism and strange fruit throwing it out there. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I am open to reading the comics. I'm just not really good with reading comic genres. I'm like web comics are about as far as I usually go. Um, I think I really have only read. Uh, I've only read one. Um, graphic novel my entire life, and it was Persepolis. Well, technically two, because I, I read both of them. Persepolis one and Persepolis two. Um so my problem with reading comics especially is because i did try i really did especially when i was doing a lot of um nerd moment here uh when i was doing a lot of dc comics role play <laughs> um in particular i was role playing as kate kane batwoman the newer lesbian version um not the weird circus acrobat heiress thing from the silver age comics um but i tried reading more um of the you know kate kane reboot stories so that i could get a little bit more background and everything and i it's just like i pay six dollars and i blast through that comic in about five minutes um and while i absolutely love the artwork and i think that it is stunning and that these people should be compensated for their work absolutely i have trouble justifying it to, to myself because the the actual enjoyment that i get out of this is so incredibly small and limited um and that's why the only times that i've ever actually sat down and been like i can read this whole thing is when it is a very long work and at least it reads the length of a short story um you know with persepolis one and two i think i blew through persepolis one and two in one sitting um i literally spent the entire day just reading it um so the wicked and the divine okay famous people reincarnated gods based on modern historic famous people that's interesting honestly that's interesting i'll have to take a look at it make sure to send me that on discord if you would or or through whatever channel works just to remind me because i probably for, will forget it by the end of the stream <laughs> let's be honest um Yeah, I guess that's fair. I have read a couple of Jinji Itos, um, mostly because I tried to just understand what people were talking about when they referenced his works. Uh, really regretted that decision because I am not good with horror, <laughs> and Jinji Ito definitely gets that that spot that that spot in the back of your brain where you just are like, okay, time to go to sleep. You turn off the lights and you just stare at the ceiling, going, "If I close my eyes, I will die." um you know <laughs> what's scarier sitting in a room in the dark by yourself or closing your eyes and letting the nightmares in <laughs> junji ito definitely brings up those questions um i don't know it's it's just one of those things that i've never really fully gotten into and i i fully appreciate people who do i fully appreciate people who enjoy it um and i can certainly understand why people will enjoy it it's just not something that i generally have found enjoyment from it's the same kind of feeling that i have towards anime honestly i get why people can like it i just have never found an anime that i've gotten into the closest that i can say that i've gotten into an actual serialized anime series um i just said anime series in two different ways um is uh Avatar. Avatar The Last Airbender and Korra. Um, so I guess technically three. It's Avatar, Last Airbender, Korra, and the third one that I'm struggling with is Totally Spies. Yeah, from kids. From being a kid, Totally Spies was 1000% up my alley, and it's an anime. They are Western, yeah. Um, they are Western. Uh, both Atla and LOK are 
were produced here in the United States. And um, Totally Spies was even, Totally Spies was French. Um, but I'm definitely one of those people that looks at, I, I look at anime and I, <laughs> I look at people who claim that the only anime that can ever exist is stuff that comes out of Japan, and then I see stuff that didn't come out of Japan, and I like I recognized for a while that this very well could have been. Um, I just don't understand what I'm talking about because I was looking at that as an uncultured swine looking at you know what I thought was anime and being like that looks like anime to me, so I don't understand what the difference is. But now that I've actually had sit downs with people who really do like anime and really have looked at a lot of this. And been like, okay, so what do you think about this versus that? Like, is there really a distinction? Um, and yeah, no. There's, there's, it's anime is a genre and it is not exclusive to Japan. Sorry. Hot take from the, the not anime crowd. Um, I also have to add again, I just realized there is actually an anime that I do watch, another one um, that isn't that is a uh, Japanese anime as well. Um, I have really enjoyed it, although I have not finished it yet. I need to do that. Um, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm forgetting the name. Oh, my God. Oh, Cowboy Bebop. Um, Cowboy Bebop. And a big, big chunk of one of the reasons why I struggle with anime, especially foreign anime, and I specify foreign as in non-English speaking, um, is the subs versus dubs thing. Um, I'm 100% in the dubs area. If it doesn't have a good dub, I'm going to be lost. I don't like reading subtitles. Um, there are plenty of really good TV shows that I found through Netflix and Amazon that I will not watch because they are not in English, and therefore I try watching them with English subtitles, find myself just reading the subtitles and not actually paying attention to what's going on on screen, or they have dubs, and I'm really distracted by the fact that the sounds coming out of their mouths <laughs> do not match the movement. Um, I tried this with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the original Swedish productions. Um, I just could not, I literally watched less than five minutes of the first one, and then I turned it off because I could not. Even though I know that they are very good movies and became highly recommended. Um, there was a Brazilian TV show about a series of murders and like a murder mystery and then closed uh, in a, on a cruise ship, you know, in the 1930s. So like 1,000% of my alley, I wanted to watch it so badly. Like, oh my God. But just couldn't get into it because it was it was in portuguese um and i was just like i just was it in portuguese it wasn't german was it argentinian god i don't remember what i don't remember enough of it i remember i looked it up at one point i tried watching a little bit of it and i was just like oh this is um i don't remember what the original one was i was trying to watch a dub of it and it just just mm, mm. and it was not a very good dub either which didn't help uh, one of the reasons why Cowboy Bebop works really well for me was because it was initially animated to be in English. Um, and so everything lines up really easily. Um, their mouth movements are, you know, uh, indicative of exactly what I'm hearing. And therefore, my brain isn't telling me something's wrong here. Um, and it's easy for me to let that part relax and just enjoy what's happening on screen, even though I don't usually understand exactly what's going on. Um, Anyway, going a step back, um, Lolita Sherlock Holmes taking place between World War One and World War Two. Interesting. Okay. Code Lyoko, beastly Canadian anime. I don't know what that is. Um, I've definitely been wanting to try and rewatch Totally Spies, though. I probably will. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, I watched, what did I watch earlier in the pandemic? Um, I definitely was on a gumball kick for quite a while sometime last year. And then I got into Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls is a great series. Um, I don't care that it was quote unquote meant for children. It's a good time. Um, I don't know. Like I definitely tried when I was younger to watch some of these you know some of these things because i had some friends who were into 
like Gundam, whatever it was at that point. I don't remember. Um, and yeah, it's just, I couldn't get into any of that. Dragon Ball, none of those. Um, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand why we care. Um, the answer is don't really have to. Um, and then on top of that, I just didn't really have a lot of exposure to it. I've recognized that a lot of my friends who are into anime had a lot of exposure when they were younger. Um, I never got that. Um, I was either too busy or we didn't have that kind of cable. That was the thing. Um, we had basic cable for pretty much my entire life, but for some reason... The cable company would give us like extra channels every once in a while, and then they would realize their mistake and take them back. But in the meantime, that short period was when I was able to sit down and watch things like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, you know, finally getting away from watching basically PBS. But what that ended up meaning was that my, you know, childhood was spent watching a lot of NCIS, CSI, and <laughs> Ugly Betty. Um, which is my bread and butter as a kid. So you want to go back and take a step back to talk about telenovelas. Um, Ugly Betty is one of my absolute favorite shows on the planet, uh, and it was based on um, it was based on a telenovela. Um, Soy Betty La Fea, I believe. Um, Murder She Wrote Matlock. Yes. See, that's the thing, though. I kind of wish that I had ended up growing up on like more classic. Um, you know, procedurals rather than the very militaristic rah rah United States police are amazing things instead. Like Matlock and Murder She Wrote probably went about a lot better because they weren't near these uh propaganda. <laughs> um, because it's really hard for me to look back on my watching NCIS and CSI and not think like, oh, wow, those shows were absolutely written to basically just be propaganda. Um, and yeah, Murder, She Wrote's a marvelous series. So um, what was nice was that when it was available, I actually did watch a lot of um, uh, Poirot and Miss Marple. Um, which is what got me into Agatha Christie, um, which is what got me into liking the murder mystery genre. So, you know, it made me who I am today. If you're queer and you're not into murder mysteries, are you even really queer? I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. And here we are about ready to play a noir with cats. Um, and speaking of that, it is now <laughs> a full 40 minutes later since I actually showed up on camera. 50 minutes since I started the stream. I don't want to make you guys wait any longer. Because um, I do have to actually go to bed at some point tonight. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get into it. Um, before we start, I do want to say I haven't gotten very far into anything. I literally just looked at the menu. But I do want to put out a bit of a content warning right at the start. Content warning for suicide, hardcore. Right away, you are going to be greeted with an image of someone who has hanged themselves. This is, you know, it's noir. It's going to be dark. But I just want to clarify that right ahead of time. I have tried, at least in the past, whenever we've dealt with games that deal with, um, you know, murders and violence and especially self-harm, to try and give heads up when I know what's going on. Uh, problem is I um, end up playing a lot of games where I don't know what's going to happen next. So for like the big one that I remember was um, uh, Sexy Brutale. Um, I did not know that that suicide was going to happen at that point. And if I had, I would have put up some kind of warning at some point still. So content warning, suicide, self-harm full disclosure and with that in mind let's actually play <laughs> oops that is the washington post <laughs> it's not what i wanted there we go okay 
Jesus. Oh, God. Okay. How is the... How is that sound-wise? Is that too loud? It just, like, took me by surprise. Holy crap. <laughs> um, it's still too loud for me. I mean, that might... Okay, yeah, let me take care of that. I turned it up a little bit from Tangle Tower because things were a little too quiet, so... Now the opposite is happening. Now, even just for me, like, on my monitoring here, it's just like... This is some loud music here. All right, let's get into this. Oh, I didn't check the graphics settings. I think they're set to ultra, though. They better be. The amount I spent on this computer and all the graphics card shit that I've got inside it, it better be. Still hasn't noticed it yet, has she? There it is. I swear to God, that is a stock sound effect. This interactive drama uses similar controls to other games of his genre. Do you still want to enable the tutorial? I don't know what the similar controls are. So we're gonna... We're going to enable the tutorial regardless. Silhouette on the right is no longer visible. I'm going to tell you right now that I tend to prefer my games with a little more brightness than they ask for. I don't like being in giant black voids where I'm told that I'm in an actual space. So, I like to actually see the area around me. I've read a great article about that, too. I think it was on Polygon. They have those little, like, contrast slider things being, like, adjusted so that you can't see this thing, and it's 100... They recognize that it's 100% up to personal preference. It's not actually going to make it look like they intended or whatever. Sometimes when I walk into my office, I get the feeling that I'm walking among the ruins of a lost civilization. Not because of the reigning disorder, but because it feels like the remains of the civilized person I used to be. Where is that damn detective? I'm gonna rip his head off. I swear I'll tear his eyes out. Hey! Hand over the pictures, you bastard. Now! Otherwise, you're gonna be dead meat. Hear me, cat? Oh, it's not even implied to be New York. It, he's got the Department, New York Department of State certi certification right there. It's absolutely New York City. Um, but here we go. Okay, yeah. Do I know you? Your face rings a bell, but... You've been spying on me. You took pictures of me with a lady. <laughs> Well, then you'll understand why I didn't really focus on your face, right? I'm gonna kid! Okay, quick events. Got it. You! <laughs> oh, wow. We're just getting right into it, aren't we? Give me the goddamn pictures! Huh. I have to choose between a headbutt and a punch in different situations, and that will change things. This is... Well, that worked. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, man. You broke my jaw. 
Well, now it matches your marriage. If you show my wife those pictures, I'm dead meat. She'll ruin my life, please. Sure, the gun didn't work. So why not shed some tears? I wasn't going to use it, man. I've never shot a fly. And I'm no two-timer either. It only happened once, for God's sake. I'm just her bodyguard, that's all. She seduced me. I love my wife, honest to God. I, I even quit the damn job for her. You can't break up a family for one tiny mistake. Okay, hold on. I can turn it up a little bit again. I must have gone a little too far. Let's try that. And I can absolutely add subtitles on. Um, but when I'm actually playing, I think... Um... Okay. I'm glad that there's a freeze frame on here because I don't actually know how to describe this. I literally just, like, kicked the shit out of this guy. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> oh, the music is louder than voices. I can definitely fix that then. Breaking up your family? I don't think you need my help there, buddy. Okay, how about this? You give me those pictures, and tell her a white lie, and I pay you ten times what she's offering. You save my family, and you make a pretty penny. What do you say? Deal? For as long as I could remember, I had collected nothing more than bad gigs, debt, and sorrow. My self-respect and bank account were racing to see who'd hit rock bottom first. There was more than money at stake. The man seemed honest. The best I could do for his wife was to hide the truth, no matter how low it made me feel. All right. I'll tell your wife you're clean. Get the hell out of here before I regret it. You have made a decision that has major influence on the course of events. So and so will remember that. Here we go. I love those Pow. feelings. Three. Thank God. Two. You're a good man, Blackside. One. You won't regret helping out Eugene Colbert. Why I am you. I looking at this My very blurry? My left me several gifts. First of all, a swollen hand. That guy's skin was hard as a rock. Second of all, an empty wallet. Business as usual. Third, I was starting to second-guess the morality of my last choice. Last but not least, the certainty that more gifts were yet to come. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! He's a nice guy. You'll, uh... <sighs> <laughs> I'm glad I, I didn't hit that button. Black sad. Doesn't even know you. And he's already offering you a seat. <laughs> Dick, how the hell am I supposed to guess it's you if you don't even knock first? Shut up and listen, buddy. All right? I brought you a client. Yeah, I'm always worried about the decisions, too. I'm not going to lie. I'm very interested to see kind of whether my decisions gel with the character. Votek, absolutely. I tend to I tend to sit on the um Yeah, I can't. There we go. Okay. Um your black sad. Oh, well, there you go. Look at that. Behavioral stats, stats, da 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 da. Okay, well there you go. Fifty percent hard-boiled, sensitive. Nothing new there. A little more pragmatic than upright. Uh, definitely more lonesome right now. No, more romantic. I'm sorry, other way. Um, so more upright than pragmatic. I see. More romantic than lonesome. Definitely more swift than clumsy, and I'm definitely going to stay that way. 
Uh, and I'm 100% talkative because I can tell you right now, I do not pass up instances where I want to talk. It's still somehow slightly more profitable than Ruinous. I mean, honestly, that's kind of how I like to do it. I like to not be the one dispensing justice unless it's very well earned. Okay, let's double check our audio settings here a little bit. Oh, this tutorial is a little extensive. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the audio down a little bit. Sometimes when I walk into my office, I get the feeling that I'm walking among the ruins of a lost civilization. Not because of abandoned disorder, but because it feels like the remains of a civilized person I am used to. Sometimes when I walk into my office, I get the feeling that I'm walking among the ruins of a lost civilization. Yeah, that works. Okay. turn up the audio a little bit more now that I've had to essentially turn things down. Um, double check all of these. They should be like nice and high though. Excellent. Good. Okay. And then finally subtitles. There we go. Okay. Okay, so tends to get this middle ground, payback in the end. Villains usually earn their justice, they just have a tendency to get justice enacted on them over things they may not have done. Okay, interesting, interesting. Well, we'll see how this story plays out. I don't know if this is actually based on any of the comics specifically. Okay. Is there supposed to be dialogue? It looks like she's talking, but I don't hear anything. And that's why we need to find him soon, or we, we will have a very serious problem. Mm. Thanks for the information and the picture. They'll really come in handy. Let me see if I have this straight. Bobby Yale, a boxer at Dunn's Gym, has a crucial fight against the reigning champion in two weeks. But he disappeared two days ago. Yes. Your father, Joe Dunn, boxing manager and gym owner, Hanged himself two days ago. Yes. Okay. In short, if Bobby Yale is a no-show for his fight, you'll have to pay a fine. But since you don't have the cash on hand, your father's gym would have to close. Yes. So you want me to find Bobby Yale? Yes. No. Jake wants you to find Bobby. Okay, interesting change of Oh, events. I see. Well, first of all... I'm really sorry, Miss Dunn. Please accept my condolences. Thank you. Damn it, John. Will you take the case or not? Sure. I know the money is tight, so uh, how about this? If I solve the case, we'll see how much you can pay. I'm sure we'll find a suitable price. There we go. Reluctant acceptance. <laughs> the perfect middle ground. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. I 
I will say there are some weird moments where I feel like there should be music. Like, there should be music right now. It's a transition. Hmm. Like, this is awkwardly quiet. Just feels weird. I know you already went to Yale's apartment and found nothing. But I'll search it myself at some point. Okay. Or, or yeah, something. Miriam Purnell, the one who found Joe Dunn's body. She works part time at Sam's Diner, just down the road on the left, right? That's right. Uh, I think I might uh, pay her a visit as well. And the gym, of course, to see what I can find. Okay, I think I've got enough to start with for now. All right, here we go. Okay, okay, okay. All right. He moves a little bit like a boat, but we got I it. I remember that fight. Back when Jake was coming up the ranks. Nope. Come on. Mm, he... Oh, come on. I'm not trying to uh, I better come in these here. Two alone. I don't want to... Look at the thing on the wall. Let me. Looks like Dunn there can go. measure his daughter and Bobby Yeo each year. Sonia's measurements stop at 18, and there's a gap in Bobby's between ages 15 and 17. That's a little telling. It's a weird self portrait. Is that Dunn? Wow. Okay. Interesting. Up. There we go. Oh, it's the roof. Okay, not what I expected. I will say, this is not the first game where we've had a character that seems like they just do not... What is this? Okay, so something's wrong with this then for sure okay i don't know why i'm not getting music then sometimes when i walk into my office i get the feeling that i'm walking i play this and i get music though what's going on then Okay. I'm trying. Seeing if anybody else has had this issue. Hmm. Maybe in trouble finding anything about that. Seen a bunch of articles about the music in it. Try restarting, maybe. Um, 
check the forums soundtrack use price hike ps hmm I don't know what's going on here. Check the support center. Um, other issues? No. Ability, launching, control, installation, DOSBox, nothing. All right, yeah, let me try restarting it because I'm not finding much of anything right now. Just give me a second on this front, guys. for it to do its thing, finish this sync, and immediately gets rid of all my settings. Okay. <laughs> all right, can you see this? So I feel like if I alt tab out of this, it's gonna mess everything up. So I'm trying not to. Okay, good. <laughs> I just wanted it to work. Yeah, there was music in the menu. Even though there was music when we had the menu at the beginning, though. Like, the music needs to be well I'm playing, too, by the sounds of it. button and pick up where we left off. Yes. 